today we are going to discuss new chapter which is chapter uh, number six in chapter number six we are going to talk about the portland cement and uh, we use the portland cement in order mainly in order to produce portland cement concrete so it's very important to know the properties and the behavior of the cement okay so the portland cement concrete is the most widely used manufactured construction materi material in the world and it used in structure such as building we use the portland cement in order to uh, uh, construct buildings in order to construct bridges in order also to construct tunnels dams factories pavement and playgrounds and many uh, structures that is why the uh, uh, portland cement concrete became the most widely used manufactured construction materials in the world also the portland cement concrete is a cheap uh, cheap material so it's very important to uh, study uh, the portland cement concrete and the uh, uh, cement the portland cement is going to bind the aggregate together mainly the concrete is made from uh, uh, cement and aggregates and in order to activate the cement i need to use the water so the portland cement concrete consists of portland cement i need to have cement i need to have aggregates whether it's fine aggregate or coarse aggregate also i'm going to have air voids and in many cases i'm going to have admixtures so admixtures is anything other than those anything other than the water the aggregates and the cement we call this admixtures and we use the admixtures in order to improve some properties in the uh, concrete later on we are going to learn about the properties of the concrete and sometimes we need to improve one of these properties and that can be achieved by using the admixtures and of course the main use of portland cement all of you saw the portland cement and the main use of the portland cement is to make portland cement concrete so the main the main use for the portland cement in order to produce portland cement concrete this one but also we can use the cement for other purposes not only to produce or to make portland cement concrete sometimes we use the portland cement in order to stabilize the soil and the aggregate base for highway construction we know that before we start any uh, uh, engineering project we need to make sure that the soil uh, uh, have the ability in order to take the load upon her and uh, especially for the highway construction uh, before you put the uh, asphalt concrete you need to make sure that the soil uh, is going to have the ability in order to take the load so in order to strengthening the, the soil we may we may mix the uh, soil with the portland uh, cement the main use for portland cement concrete but sometimes we are going to use the uh, 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 portland cement in order to make the soil and the aggregate base stronger so what is the uh, portland cement portland cement actually are hydraulic cements composed primarily of hydraulic calcium silicates and that means that uh, the uh, uh, hydraulic cement set and hardening by reacting chemically with the water since the portland cement is hydraulic cement that means i need to use water with the uh, uh, cement in order to activate the uh, the cement and as a result the cement is going to set and harden because of that reaction even after the uh, uh, cement became solid like this one uh, adding water is going to make the 
uh, cement stronger. So this action between the cement and the water, we call this hydration. So in the hydration process, the cement combines the cement combines with water to form a stone like a mass, like this one, for example. And we call this paste, cement paste. When you add the, the cement and the water, we call this cement paste. So the hydration begins as soon as the cement comes in contact with water. So when the water comes into contact with the cement, the hydration process will start. And that process is going to continue. The hydration process is going to continue. And as long as the uh, hydration process is going to continue, the concrete is going to be, be uh, harder and stronger. And most of the hydration process and the strength development is going to take place within the first months of the mixing. Even though they are going to continue, but the process is going to be more slowly. Okay. And uh, also, we have what's so called mortar. So if you are going to mix the cement paste with the fine aggregate, then the product uh, is mortar. So when you mix the cement plus the water, the product is cement paste. And if you mix the cement paste with the fine aggregate, the product is a mortar. Look like that. And if you mix the cement paste with the fine aggregates and with a coarse aggregate, then the product is concrete. And the cement paste is going to uh, 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 strengthening the, 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 the bond between the fine aggregate and the coarse aggregate. So like you can see here in the concrete, the cement paste is going to hold the coarse aggregate and the fine aggregate together. So the paste acts as an adhesive and binds the aggregate together to form the concrete. So the concrete, it made from, you, you need to have water, you need to have sand, fine aggregate, you need to have the cement, you need to have the, the gravel, the coarse aggregate, and we need to have uh, uh, admixtures. We say that the admixtures is anything other than those four ingredients. And if we are going to talk about the volumes of these ingredients, the uh, Portland cement is about 7.5% to 15% of the volume so the amount of the cement is is small and the most expensive component is the portland cement i have the aggregates uh, which is about uh, 60 to 75 of the volume like we said that the aggregate is the main component in concrete in asphalt in concrete and also in asphalt concrete and sometimes we add admixtures. Now we have a good idea about the concrete. We know the uh, ingredients of the concrete. We know the uh, different uh, products between the uh, uh, cement and the water or cement water plus fine ag aggregate. Now we need to, to understand how the cement is going to produce, how we produce cement. The uh, production of Portland cement starts with two basic uh, raw ingredients. We have basic uh, uh, two raw ingredients. We have calcareous material and we have argillaceous uh, 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 material. We have calcareous material and we have aggregaceous material. The first, the first one, the calcareous material, is the calcium oxide. It's made from the calcium oxide. And where we can find the calcium oxide? We can find, we can find calcium oxide in limestone, uh, chalk, or 
oyster shells. While the agrilaceous material is a combination of silica and alumina. And that can be obtained from the clay or from the shell or from the blast furnace slag. So mainly I'm going to uh, uh, gather clay and also I'm going to gather limestone. The limestone, uh, I'm going to find the calcium oxide. And in the clay, I'm going to find the silica and alumina. Then I'm going to crush uh, those materials and I'm going to store them in silos. I'm going to bring the clay and I'm going to bring the limestone and then they are going to went through a primary crusher and then secondary crusher. Then I'm going to store them into silos. The next process, I'm going to grind the uh, components. I'm going to uh, uh, grind those components in a uh, grinding mill. So the raw materials in the desired proportions are passed through a grinding mill using either the wet process or the dry process. In the wet process, we are going to use a water in order to help us in the grinding process in the in the dry process we are not going to use uh, a water then the ground material is stored until it, it can be sent to the clay the clay is a big oven so uh, first i gather the raw materials the clay and the limestone i crushed them then i grind them and now I'm going to send them to the clean. In the clean, the raw materials are melted at temperatures of 1,400 degrees Celsius to 1,650 degrees Celsius. And that process is going to chemically change the raw material into the cement clinger. So the product here is a cement clinker. When the raw material has been sent to the cling, now they chemically uh, has been changed to new component, which is known as cement clinger, this one. And then the clinger is going to uh, cold and stored. And the final process involves grinding the clinger into a fine into a fine powder so i'm going to uh, grind this uh, cement clinger into fine powder and during the grinding a small amount of gypsum is added to regulate the setting time of the cement in the concrete so the cement clinger need to be uh, grinded and as a result, the cement is going to be like a powder. But if I'm if I'm not going to use a gypsum, when I, when I'm going to add a water to the cement, it's going to set quickly. That is why I need to add the gypsum. So the gypsum is going to regulate the setting time of the cement in the concrete. And the finished project may be stored and transport, transported into either bulk or sacks. And in order to uh, keep the uh, cement for a long period of time, it should be kept dry. We need to keep the cement uh, dry as much as possible. Because if you put the cement in humid environment, the uh, cement is going to react with the water and that can damage the quality of your concrete. So now we need to know the uh, composition of the uh, cement uh, uh, manufacture before the cling. 
because we say that after we put the raw material inside the cling, the chemi chemically has been uh, changed. So before the cling, we have like uh, uh, four components. We have the lime, we have the silica, we have the alumina, and we have the iron oxide. The, uh, uh, the largest percentage by far is the lime, represent about 68%. And the, the second uh, largest uh, percentage is the silica, about 22%. And we have a small amount of alumina, about 5%, and a small amount of iron oxide by 3%. And we have other oxide, about 2%. So the raw material materials used to manufacture the Portland cement are the lime, silica, alumina, and the iron oxide. Then after the clean, we know that these raw materials interact in the clean, right? And that, uh, and as a result, uh, a complex chemical compound will be formed. We call this calcination. So the calcination process in the cling restructure the molecule composition, producing new four main compounds. So here we have the uh, uh, compounds before the uh, cling, and here we have the compound after the, the cling. After the cling, after the uh, calcination process, we are going to have tricalcium silicate, we are going to have the calcium silicate. Also, we are going to have tricalcium uh, aluminate. And finally, we are going to have tetracalcium alumino ferrito. So after the cling, we have uh, uh, four uh, main uh, uh, components. The tricalcium silicate or is going to be referred to as C sub 3S. C refer to the calcium oxide and S refer to uh, uh, silicon dioxide. And the A refer to uh, aluminum oxide and F refer to iron oxide. So the tricalcium uh, silicate is going to be referred to as C sub 3S and decalcium silicate is going to be referred to as C sub 2S and tricalcium aluminate is going to be referred as C sub 3A and uh, tetracalcium alumina ferrito is going to be referred as C sub 4AF. And the largest component is C sub 3S, about 45% uh, to 60%. The second largest uh, uh, proportion is C sub 2S, uh, between 15% to 30%. And also I have C sub 3A, uh, about range between uh, 6 to 12 tw percent. And finally, we have C sub uh, 4 AF, range between 6 to 8 percent. So here I have the component before the cling, the raw material that it has been gathered. And here we have uh, the uh, uh, four uh, uh, ingredients after the calcination process. Uh, next time, we are going to talk about the role of each compound. We are going to, to talk about the uh, raw, role of C sub, uh, C sub 3S, C sub 2S, C sub 3A, and C sub 4AF. And knowing about the role of those uh, ingredients is going to help us uh, to uh, uh, identify the, the, the different types of cements. So I'm going to stop here. If you have any uh, questions regarding this, please 